I rise as a proud child and grandchild of migrant farm workers. We all know that today is a special day because today at theaters across the country, the first motion picture ever of the life and, uh, and struggles of Cesar Chavez and many other courageous farm workers opens up. And it tells a story of, for the next generations, the young people, about what our communities went through to have some of the most basic rights that many of us uh, take for granted today. But it also tells the, the valiant story of not only Mexican workers, but first it was Filipino farm workers that went out on strike calling for better working conditions. And later other groups joining in that farm worker rights movement, including people like Naji Daifula, a Yemenese farm worker who's one of the first to die on the early picket lines of the United Farm Workers. Other names like Jerry Cohen, the lawyer, and Marshall Gantz, Jewish American organizers and attorneys that were a critical part of the farm worker movement. Those stories are often not told. But people also don't realize that Cesar Chavez at the age of 17 was a Navy veteran, served his country. He was also, another chapter of his life, that he was a zoot suitor growing up in the urban neighborhoods in San Jose. The many facets of this fascinating man, a common man, but who ended up doing uncommon things. But this has a personal, uh, has a personal meaning for me, because back in 1970, when Cesar Chavez and Dolores first came to organize in the Pajaro and Salinas Valleys, my grandparents were one of the first families to join that farm worker rights movement, and were dedicated up until the day they passed away. And they inculcated the values, as I was walking with my grandfather, uh, the values of standing up for other people, using your life to make a difference, improving the lives of others. My grandfather, who only went to the third grade, my grandmother, who even never went to school at all, could barely sign her name on a legal document, taught us that education was important not only to improve our own lives, but it was more important to use it to improve the lives of other people. So back in 1971, my, my mother, my grandfather came outside here on the west side to fight for the most basic rights for farm workers. At that time, there, were no, there was no drinking water, there were no portable restrooms out in the field. There was no protections against pesticides that endangered my families when they were sprayed by toxic chemicals. Those things we take for granted today, but at one time they did not exist. Farm workers at one point had no unemployment insurance. They didn't qualify at one point in time. So it, you feel you come full circle that over 40 years later, now the children and grandchildren of farm workers are now members of the legislature. People like Assemblymember Bonten, myself, and others who at one point were out there with our grandparents fighting for these most basic rights, and now we're able to be champions for improved working conditions of farm workers. But that was also a part of the legacy of Cesar Chavez. It wasn't only to fight to improve the conditions of the field, but another thing that doesn't get mentioned often is that he also wanted to improve the, the opportunities for the children and grandchildren of farm workers. Last weekend, I was at the, the Migrant Parent Conference in Los Angeles. These are the parents who are trying to organize in their schools and fight for a better education for their children, many of them whose education is disrupted when they have to move from different areas picking uh, the harvest, uh, different agricultural crops. That struggle still continues. There's still a lot more work to be done, but we honor Cesar Chavez by championing those rights, supporting those issues that are going to improve the lives of farm workers and their children. I ask for support on this important measure.